Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It is the week before Thanksgiving, which means it officially is almost time for us to all completely stress out, brining turkeys and making stuffing and overfilling ourselves <laughs> at the table. And I am very, very excited. We are having family over for Thanksgiving this year. I'm really, really excited, especially after not being able to really do anything last year at all because of the pandemic. We're happy and excited to be able to spend this Thanksgiving with family. So knowing that, uh, I'm getting a menu ready. I am really, really excited for turkey. I'm really excited for sweet potato casserole and stuffing. And I'm excited to be in the kitchen all day with my family because I really love cooking. And to that end, I decided this year, maybe I wanted to make something I could wear while I'm doing that. And in my Simplicity Vintage Patterns that I found from an estate sale is an apron pattern. This is Simplicity 4868. It's a very simple pattern, but I think it's gonna be really ideal it is a full penny apron, which means that it's gonna give great coverage for splashes and has a lovely big pocket on the side um, and very reasonable and sensible straps across the back that will hopefully keep the top in place. Uh, after picking this pattern, I went through my stash to see if maybe I had some lovely Thanksgiving fabric or fall fabric with leaves. And unfortunately, I didn't have anything at all and it occurred to me that instead of making an apron that was very specific just for Thanksgiving I could simply make an apron that I could really enjoy wearing all the time and for and for all of our family events Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter any big holiday where we get to stuff ourselves ideal and so then I started digging through my stash trying to find the right fabric for that when I came across not traditional fabric but a stash of items from my husband and I's grandmothers things that we have been given over the years or that we collected um, that we didn't want to get rid of items that were special to us but unfortunately items we simply don't use and this blue tablecloth uh, happens to be from one of our grandmothers. It does not fit our dining room table. So I thought, why not upcycle it, turn it into something I can wear and see and use all the time and think about family and friends. And what better holiday to start wearing it than Thanksgiving, which is really about giving thanks and spending time with family and friends. But first things first, I need to get this pattern out. I need to make sure all the pieces are there as this was a vintage pattern or an antique pattern that I had gotten at an estate sale. Make sure we've got everything that we need. Make sure that the pattern itself isn't too fragile. Unfortunately, the envelope for this is pretty, it's pretty beat up, I'm gonna be honest. And so I do have some concerns about the integrity of the pattern if it comes down to it that it's a little bit too fragile to use, I have a couple of options. I can either put this one aside and use a different pattern. I've got four or five different apron patterns. Or I can choose if I have the time available to trace the pattern pieces out to get them as flat as I can, as carefully as I can, trace them onto new pattern paper, cut them out, and then I can utilize those new pattern pieces whenever I want to make this without having to get out the originals each time, potentially damaging them or ruining them. So to that end, let's go ahead and get the pattern pieces out, get everything laid out and see where we're at from there. Okay guys, I've gotten the pattern pieces out of the envelope. I have ironed them out and made them nice and smooth and I'm very happy to say all the pieces are here and the pattern itself, the, the pattern paper is in very, very good condition. It's nice and thick. It does not seem fragile or prone to tearing or shattering. And so I am going to continue with this pattern, our simplicity pattern. I'm going to go ahead and set it up on the fabric, make sure that the tablecloth actually will provide enough fabric for this particular pattern. 
and get pieces cut out. Okay guys, I have completely cut out all of our pattern pieces for our Simplicity 4868 apron. I had more than enough fabric, thankfully, in this particular tablecloth and I've got some left over in the event that I want to make another beautiful apron. We'll get our instructions out. In this pattern, and like most vintage patterns, they have step-by-step -step instructions as to which pieces to pin and sew together first, and really the order of assembly, which if you are not familiar with patterning or sewing, this is a wonderful place to start. Over time, most people who do so inevitably come up with their own routines or their own assembly preferences in how they do things. But even once you have gotten that far, continuing to look back at the pattern that you're working with, reading through the instructions before you start to see how the person who designed this pattern recommends you put it together is always a great idea. Occasionally they'll have a small tip or trick that can be really helpful or occasionally you might read through it and say, oh, I see what they were thinking there, but I have a way I would prefer to do that that I feel like will work better for me. But I always do start by taking a quick peek at the pattern, at the instructions that are included within the pattern, and then getting a jump start on my pinning and assembly. Okay guys, I have the four main pieces of the apron put together, the center section, the two side sections, and then the skirt. And as I was pinning it onto my mannequin, I noticed that the waistline wasn't quite falling correctly. Uh, I do have my mic and a bow, the wrap from this dress, kind of in the way, but you can see right now that I've got now the waist of the skirt portion of the apron at the natural waistline here. And what you can see is that, whoop, this front is way, way too long for me. If I allowed this to fall where they had initially intended, with the shoulders here, the waistline for the skirt came, came down around my hips. So I'm going to take my handy dandy chalk and I'm going to kind of mark out where I want this to kind of come down to. And then what I can do is rip these seams with a seam ripper down to this area, cut that off, and then I can just shorten my shoulder sleeves and that's going to solve my problem. pinking shears, our little um, scissors that have the alligator teeth, the pinking shears to prevent fraying in this particular case with this fabric to stop the bleeding because the fabric was really actually beginning to fray more and more as I started to work with it. And if I make anything else with the remaining portions of this tablecloth, I definitely think I will cut out the pattern with the pinking shears to kind of stave off that fray from the very start. So I am back today. It is after bedtime. I am in comfy clothes and I am ready to finish this apron so that I can wear it for making our lovely Thanksgiving dinner. Where I left off with the apron, I did complete some of the seams here across the top over the shoulder straps. Um, I did complete the pocket and pinned it 
into place where I thought it should go. I actually made the two pockets thinking two is better than one. Pockets are great. However, when I did try to put it on, it just felt like too much. The pattern only calls for one pocket and I think I can see why. That just looks nicer. It looks very cute versus this looks maybe a little overwhelming. So I don't think I'm going to add that on. I think I'm going to stick with the single pocket like the pattern calls for. The other thing the pattern does call for that I have not yet done is it shows piping along the seams. We can see here. And I do have a lovely pink ribbon that matches the pink in the flowers within the pocket and I'm considering putting it on but I'm not 100% sold on it at the moment. I'm, I don't want the apron to become too busy or too frilly. I still want it to be very workable. So for right now, what I do need to finish, sewing this in place, waistband, seam, tie, pocket, and we're done with this one, unless I get fancy and add some ribbons to it. We will see how the night goes and where we are at uh, when we get closer. Okay, so reveal on our beautiful Simplicity apron. I am in love with how it turned out. I like the long clean lines of the front. It's very comfortable. It niches in at the waist just the way I like it to. I love the fact that the shoulders are being held up in back by that lovely little cornerstone piece. I think if I made this again, I would take a little bit off this back portion so that I could choose to cinch it in a little bit further if I wanted. I also didn't love this waistline piece, how it attached. I would be tempted in the future to put the waistband on this back skirt portion before attaching it to the side piece or simply doing piping that comes all the way around and using that as the finishing edge maybe just some basic binding. I think that would be very convenient, very helpful, and it would create a nice clean look. You could also use a contrasting piping, um, say like a pink to match the pocket, something like that. But overall, I mean, I think it's very flattering. It has pretty good movement, covers my dress entirely so that I know I'm not gonna get anything on it, which I really like. I love, 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 love my pocket. Um, overall, I think this one's a win, and I think I would actually make this pattern again. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure, sewing this beautiful vintage Simplicity apron. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. I would love to share more adventures with you here. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.